and the Facebook and our patron so uh, those we should be getting some people that are just now joining us here from the uh, the um, weather YouTube page and I appreciate that uh, thanks for those that join us on the other one I probably will bring the other one down just for bandwidth purposes uh, those that are just now joining us right now on uh, meteorologist Jeremy Kappel, the YouTube channel, we're on here. A tornado emergency has been declared for the town of Chester, Illinois. Chester, Illinois. So that's what we're going to be focusing this discussion on. Uh, we knew that there would be a window of time tonight where uh, we could see some very, very na uh, nasty storms. And sure enough, they have uh, erupted as I talked about the last couple of days uh, we knew that there would be a tornado risk and now that risk is becoming uh, unfortunately a reality a reality we do have tornadoes that are on the ground it appears and again we're just jumping straight into this thing I didn't have time we were we went from other programming so we're jumping right in we've got 21 on now a tornado emergency has been declared for Chester Illinois I'm going to show you kind of the wide view before we take you guys into what's happening at the ground level and let you guys get your bearing. If you're up in New York, you're fine. It's just some rain. You're in Illinois and Indiana, or I should say Ohio and Indiana. You got some pretty vigorous storms north, northern part of Indiana. You're going to be fine. The real severe stuff is uh, the stuff right along and ahead of that cold front moving south of St. Louis right now. These storms are severe. And uh, in, in some cases, these storms have been tornadic. And I'm going to show you the latest warnings. But again, Chester, Illinois, you got to be in your shelter. We have a very large uh, signature of debris uh, that is showing up on radar right now. So I'm going to show you those. There's the warnings. I'm, I'm populating those as we speak. On this map, they should be popping up. There we go. So we got the warnings. I'm going to take off the precipitation. Again, this is all south of St. Louis and west of St. Louis. So you've got individual tornado warnings. Tornado warning for Nashville and East Central Illinois. Uh, there's a warning here, and that, that bright purple pink thing says tornado emergency. Chester, where is this moving? Towards Steelville. Steelville. That's hard to say for me. So again, very serious. We've got additional warnings to the south, Perryville, south of, what is that, uh, Fredericktown, moving towards uh, Marquand. So in the red, those are tornado warnings. In the orange, we do have additional severe thunderstorms. So uh, all this with that cold front that is uh, propagating from west to east. Let me go ahead and bring up the other radar source. This is our level two data where we have had uh, what we call uh, TDS, a tornadic debris signature that has been showing up, and that's a telltale sign. That's how you know it's, it's on the ground. So let's go into the worst of the worst, and that's the one up here. Again, this town of Chester, it's already moved through. It's overhead, but we do have, again, that debris signature that is showing up. I've got uh, uh, reflectivity on the left. I've got correlation coefficient on the right. And so what we're talking about is this signature right here that cor correlates with this thunderstorm. And that's where we are seeing uh, the blues and the greens up in the sky when typically you would not. That, that should be like a red color or a purple color. When it shows this, that shows that we have debris lofted. And so that's the reason for the tornado emergency. And a lot of people don't realize this, but, um, you know, fall is secondary severe weather season. Obviously a very active storm. Uh, the storm, though, does look like it may be uh, winding down a little bit. Okay, so it's not as strong as it appeared to be, you know, right over the town of Chester. There was a huge debris ball a few minutes ago. Huge. This thing's got to be four, five, six miles across. Enormous. Not the tornado, but the debris aloft. Debris a lot being spread far and wide at six, 7,000 feet, okay? Uh, over the tornado itself, we have no idea how, how large or small it may be. Uh, but you can see where we had really good shear. Uh, this is on the order of eh, about 80, 90 mile per hour gate to gate shear. Pretty strong. Um, all right, so let's investigate the other storms. And down here, we had a debris ball on this one might still be active it's not as obvious as uh, the one over Chester right now 
Uh, but this is moving towards Silver Lake. Silver Lake tornado warning heading in your direction. So uh, we'll continue to monitor that as well. And then one more down here. And uh, let's get all the warning information that we have available. And uh, tornado warning in effect for southeastern Iron and also Madison County in southeastern Missouri. That goes until 10 p.m. Central Time uh, or 11 p.m. Eastern. So about another 34 minutes that tornado warning remains in effect. We have a tornado warning in effect for... Uh, Northern Madison and southeastern St. Francois counties in southeastern Missouri goes until 915. So that one, uh, that one should be expired. 915 is what it says. So that should be expired. Uh, let's get to Toronto warning has been canceled for Iron County. That's positive. And then up here, uh, closer to the Mississippi River, Toronto warning remains in effect until 10 p.m. Central Time for Perry County. That's a radar indicated tornado. Um, no, 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 this one's confirmed. They said confirmed, large, and dangerous tornado located near Womack or 11 miles west of Perryville. That was at 918, so about 10 minutes ago, uh, moving at about 50 miles per hour. So, um, all right, and then the one for Chester, they lifted the, did they lift the tornado emergency? Let's see. Yeah, they're just saying tornado warning now. Southeastern Randolph and Southeastern Illinois, 10, 10 o'clock Central Time. So a lot of these will expire right at 10. So they did. They lifted the tornado emergency because they're probably seeing the same thing that I'm seeing, which is that sig signature is now, it's much more diffuse. And the uh, TDS or the tornadic debris signature no longer appears to be uh, valid. So that's positive. That's very good. And then one last one, they still have the tornado warning that's in effect for Randolph and Clare counties. Now they're going to go ahead and cancel that. So that's been canceled as of 919. 919. So we're improving there. All right. With that, uh, again, I wasn't planning on jumping on tonight unless we had some really active weather. We just got out of the, our news and political program to jump on here to update our weather channel on YouTube. That's YouTube forward slash user forward slash jcapital one. Thank you for being on. Uh, let's see who we have. I've got um, um, seven on here. Chester has been hit extremely hard. It doesn't look good. It doesn't look good. From the radar imagery that I just looked at, it looked like they took a, perhaps a direct hit from what appears to be a sizable tornado based on the amount of debris that it was showing. Uh, just based on the debris alone, very alarming, but we appreciate your report. Uh, Chris on here, Dash Gamer 159, I live in Ohio, about a week ago, a tornado formed and rode the warm front for miles. And yeah, that was kind of a freak, kind of a freak storm. We had a few across Southern Indi Indiana as well that day. Uh, Buggy94, hello everyone. I'm on here. Well, thanks for being on. Chris Pierce talking about that uh, monster debris ball. And then uh, Robin Kubin in the house. Hey, Robin. And uh, oh no, I missed the earlier show. That's all right. It's, in fact, I think we're still rolling. We are. We're still rolling on Facebook. I kind of need to get this information over to my other uh, Facebook channel, which is dedicated to weather content. It's WX. Uh, live media, WX Live Media. So let me just pop this on here. It won't take me but a second or two. In the meantime, thank you for uh, for hanging with us here tonight on uh, Facebook, doing some extended coverage from our normal news and political show, which runs uh, two nights out of the week on Sundays and Wednesdays. Uh, but we uh, we needed to roll into some weather coverage tonight, obviously. So that's what we're doing here. And again, thank you guys very much for being on. So let me go ahead and get this out over to the other uh, Facebook page as well. In uh, the meantime, uh, we'll continue to monitor. I think we have a narrow window here, guys. I don't think this is going to be a, a long event. Um, we, we felt like uh, there would be a period of time this evening when conditions would be, would be maximized and would be conducive for the formation of tornadoes. That's what we're seeing now. But I don't think it's going to last. Okay, I think we're look, talking about the next hour or two of uh, some pretty some pretty rough thunderstorms, but eventually we're going to begin to lose instability. Uh, and once we lose the instability, these storms should uh, behave much better. So uh, we look forward to that. Uh, so in the meantime, let's see if Facebook's going to play okay with me. It's being weird. 
So I'm just trying to get that information over to our, again, uh, Weather Live Media page. Frustrating that it doesn't just go. Go. Do it. We got, we got work to do. So we'll see if that gets out. In the meantime, see who we have. Um, and I continue to monitor the radars here. Vigorous system. I mean, it's, it's potent low. It's like a nine, uh, 995 low uh, over northeastern Missouri right now. I'm going to lift into the southern Great Lakes here. Um, uh, but again, the potential is severe. It's now. It's now. Uh, next hour or so. Uh, maybe two, depending on how, how well these storms hold together. Uh, that tornado emergency was declared again for Chester. Uh, but, you know, from what I'm looking at, that should be no longer a, a tornado emergency. It looks like it, it had lifted or was in the process of lifting. You still need to take your uh, precautions, but uh, the tornado emergency, uh, I believe, has been lifted. We'll double check on that. Let me check back over to Facebook. Facebook's still not playing well with me right now. Ugh, come on. We've got work to do. We don't have time. And we've got about 42 people on uh, this YouTube channel. Thank you very much for being here. If uh, you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please consider doing so. We'd love to have you come back. Um, I've been doing weather for about 20 years. Those that are not familiar with me, I am a member of the American Meteorological Society. I have a uh, certified, I am a certified broadcast meteorologist and uh, happy to share my thoughts with you. Uh, Dash Gamer on here. And I'm talking about uh, confirmed tornado heading towards Perryville. I'm going to go back to that storm. We're going to show that on our other radar unit. So those that are following along with us tonight, thank you for being here. There's a look at our level two. Still waiting for Facebook to catch up. It's being weird. Imagine that. Okay. All right. So it looks like now it's going to allow me to actually do something. Let's see. All right. I just need to get a post up. Uh, we have... Uh, a weather presence on Facebook. It's called WX Live Media, so I want to make sure I get the post out there. In the meantime, we are uh, taking a close-up look at Level 2 radar out of St. Louis. Let me make sure this is the closest radar site. We could, at this point, we can probably go down to Paducah. I think that's what we'll do. So we're going to jump on down to the Paducah web, uh, radar site. We'll see what that is showing. I'll get this post out over to our friends on uh, Facebook. And uh, we'll continue uh, to get the word out. And uh, thanks for you guys' uh, efforts in helping to do that as well. So we jumped on uh, for the weather reason. Got about uh, 75 people on Facebook right now, by the way. Thank you, guys. Got Jim Perry in the house. Uh, says my boy is uh, stuck in Chicago. They got some storms up there right now. But nothing terribly severe. Just a whole bunch of heavy rain for our friends in Chicago right now, you can see. Oh, yeah, they're getting a lot of rain. <laughs> That's a lot of rain. Uh, fortunately, sub-severe for the most part up there. But uh, vigorous uh, mid-autumn storm system. And they're still, let's see here. Yeah, they're still, they're still calling in a tornado emergency. Now this time for Bremen. Tornado emergency, they're saying, for Bremen. That's at 923 or... That'd be uh, 9.23 Central Time. Tornado war 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 warning remains in effect until 10 p.m. A large, a confirmed large and destructive tornado, they're saying. That was the one that went through Chester. We know that was on the ground. Now, they just lifted the warning. Okay, I, I thought that they were going to do that. I thought they had already done that. They just lifted the tornado emergency, but they're still saying tornado warning. That's for Randolph County until 10 p.m. The other warnings, uh, it's not looking as nasty, but that's for Perry County, 10 p.m. Central. And one final warning, that's for Iron County, and it was just canceled. So, good. We are trending in the right direction. So, let me make sure that I've got all the warnings. Oh, there is a new one. South side of St. Louis, east side. Northern St. Clair County, they're, they're calling this a tornado warning until 1015. Let's take a look at it. Let's investigate. Let's go back over to our radar out of St. Louis, since obviously we are closer there. And I've got that information coming down the pipe right now. You're looking at the big, the big system. The big pinwheel continues to spin. And uh, this is going to bring a, just a ton of rain to Chicago, Detroit, 
Cleveland's going to get their share of rain and into, you know, New York's going to see some pretty decent rain, not as heavy as it's occurring now in Chicago. That severe threat, uh, it's with us now. It should wind down the next hour or two. Let me check over on Facebook if they're finally letting me do something over here. Yeah, finally. And uh, thanks for those on the Weather Channel for coming on over. Um, all right, and I said, I think Facebook was letting me do something. We'll see. Oh, the struggle is real today. It is real. I just need you to let me post, okay? Time is of the essence. Drives me crazy. No. Okay, here we go. I can finally get it out. So tornado emergencies have been declared for parts of Illinois this evening. Okay. Give me just a second. All right, that information is out. I feel better about that now. Not now, not now. All right, and uh, let's see who we have. We've got about 56 people watching live. Thank you for uh, joining us here tonight. Uh, it was not a planned um, broadcast. Uh, we knew that we were going to be on standby, but um, conditions warranted for us to jump on here and cover some of this nasty weather. But we've had a number of tornadoes, uh, many of them confirmed on the ground uh, across southeastern Missouri. And now more recently, uh, west central and now southwestern portions of Illinois. Uh, Mount Vernon, you're in line, buddy. Mount Vernon, uh, Cape Girardeau, south side of St. Louis. You guys are all seeing the, the weather now. We're looking at two lines of thunderstorms, one in advance of the cold front, one right on the cold front. So the actual cold front uh, is located right here. So that's what's sparking the line that is producing maybe a tornado south and uh, make that east side of St. Louis now. Uh, but really the other line, which has been the more active one until now, out ahead of it. And that's the one that has produced what appears to be multiple large destructive tornadoes has occurred this evening. So... Um, we appreciate you guys being on. Otherwise, there's a slew of severe thunderstorm warnings that extends all the way down into uh, northern and um, western Arkansas from near Fort Smith. That's a severe thunderstorm warning capable of 60 mile per hour winds, quarter sized hail. You got severe thunderstorm warnings uh, in effect across, uh, well, heading towards Popular Bluff, not there yet. So, West Plains, uh, south of Mountain Grove, we got uh, severe thunderstorm warnings approaching Piedmont. Farmington, and you're in between severe thunderstorm warnings right now. Uh, you got the tornado warnings that are in effect. It, it does include Fredericktown. I think you're about to get in the clear, though. Perryville, that's a tornado warning for you. Still the tornado warning for Steelville. That's hard for me to say, by the way. Steelville, whatever. Nashville, tornado warning for you as well. And then south side of St. Louis. Uh, that's a tornado warning. If you're up here in Chicago, northern Illinois, northern Indiana, lots of heavy rain, strong thunderstorms, not severe, but some flooding potential up there. See if there's any flash flooding going on right now. And we'll wait to see if that populates. I'm going to go over to our other radar site as well. Uh, this is our level two radar site tracking, again, potentially uh, tornadoes on the ground. That's, that's what we've been watching for. The, more, the most recent warning up here, and this is, appears to be kind of a bow segment, with this line now making its way through East St. Louis. I'm going to put, um, I'm going to put uh, storm relative velocity over here on the right. So we got reflectivity on the left. we got storm relative velocity on the right. I'm going to rock this back a little bit. And it's a potent-looking uh, squall. At this point, it appears to be a mature squall with a bowing segment. And then oftentimes in the north side of that, the apex of the bow, you get, you get spin. And so I think that's what they're warning on. Let's, let's read the actual warning together. 
Uh, as of 9.33 Central, about eight minutes ago, the National Weather Service uh, issued a tornado warning for northern St. Clair County. It goes until 10.15 Central time, so for about another 30, 35 minutes. It says a severe thunderstorm capable of producing both tornadoes and extensive straight line wind damage were located near Belleville. And uh, this particular storm is moving east at 50 miles per hour. It is radar indicated and uh, they're telling you to look out for flying debris. Uh, could be dangerous. They don't want you to be in a mobile home. Make sure you got a sturdy shelter. Get out of a vehicle too. Or just get out of the way. Just get out of the way. If you're on 64... You need to either go east on 64, faster than 50, by the way, or you need to hunker down at a shelter, okay? Um, all right, coming to the south, that's where we still have tornado warnings. Again, that, that name of that town, it's like Steelville, Steelville. I don't know why that's weird coming off my tongue, but it is. Um, that's, that's central Randolph County. That one comes to an end at 10 o'clock, about 18 minutes from now. Uh, honestly, the signature on that one does not look very impressive right now. I think that's done. I think it's done. Um, let's take a look. Perryville, though, they're still calling this a confirmed. Uh, nope, now they're saying it's radar indicated. Earlier it was confirmed. We, we don't have the debris signature that we had earlier, so hopefully that's a good sign. We'll go back over that and take a closer up look at that storm. Let's rock this one back a little bit because we did. We had a pretty good debris ball on that for a while. And it looks like it disappeared over the last half hour. So that one's looking better. Things are looking better. Uh, but still a dangerous storm. And then to the south, we've got Zion. You need to be in your shelter. Uh, what is it? Marquand. Get in your shelter. Eventually towards Patton. Patton, that's a severe thunderstorm warning for you. But uh, the storm has had a history of producing tornadoes. So you probably want to treat that treat that appropriately uh, all right it's 1043 eastern it is 943 central we've got 105 people on the youtube channel thank you for being on got about 70 or so still on our facebook channel from our news and uh, political feed that we had rolling earlier so we rolled from one program to the other but we appreciate you guys being on elliot smith on here on the youtube looks like some nasty straight line winds for that bow echo there's no doubt about that there's no doubt. Let's take a look at some of those velocities, by the way. And um, all right, so that bow echo is, uh, yeah, it's it's screaming. They've uh, got that tornado warned area. And let's bring up some of the towns. Fairview Heights, you're under it now. It's moving quickly towards, uh, is it Shiloh? Shiloh? O'Fallon? And then uh, Lebanon, Summer Field. All of these areas, again, underneath that tornado warning. Uh, you, and if you don't see the tornado, you are going to see some, some screaming straight line winds. Looking at the uh, winds that uh, we're picking up here at about 2 to, it's pretty close to the radar site. So this is pretty close to ground truth. But I'm looking at 50 knot, which is going to put it at around 60, 65 mile per hour. That much we know. That's if you don't get like a downburst, microburst, any of that. So you've got pretty widespread 60 mile per hour winds coming out of this deal. They're probably going to have to extend that warning. I'll, I'll be curious if they go with the tornado, if they go for um, just a severe thunderstorm warning for that. But yeah, that's screaming. That is moving very, very fast. Um, all right. I got, um, is it uh, Baby Violet? My mom's in Chester. Are they in the clear yet? I'm worried for her. Call her. See if she picks up. Because it looks like parts of Chester was clobbered with debris. I don't know if they took a direct hit from the tornado, but the debris was all over it. So let us know if you find anything out from mom. And, you know, quick prayer that she, she did okay, hopefully. I don't, I don't have enough information to give you other than it looked like a tornado was very close to the town of Chester. Uh, we know that there was a ton of debris um, that was likely impacting the town of Chester. Um, but again, we don't have specifics. It's night. It was rain wrapped. So it was very difficult to see. Uh, you wouldn't be able to see it before it was on you. Uh, Max Turner, first time following you. Well, thank you. And thank you for being on here. Uh, this program, this channel dedicated to higher end severe weather events. Um, I've done weather for over 20 years. 
I have a, you know, a degree in meteorology and atmospheric science. I am certified by the American Meteorological Society. I am a certified broadcast meteorologist, and now I'm delivering the goods on YouTube. And I'm very happy to have you guys on here tonight. And thanks for helping us get the word out that, again, we do have some dangerous weather. Um, okay, uh, Chris on here. Chester doesn't have a warning, but there are still storms. There are. And let's go back to Chester, since, and I'll see if I can come up with anything let me let me get on my Twitter feed and see if anything's coming down from the city of Chester. Because um, I'd like to know what's happening out there as well. There are storms to the west. So the concern is that you're going to see another round of severe weather or tornadoes. I don't think you're going to see tornadoes out of the second line. It's, it's possible, but it's not likely. Because what's happening here is that you've got energy that's being lost from the first line. Okay. So that first line is gonna 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 actually do you a favor when it comes to the second line. Uh, it should help to steal some of the energy associated with that, and that's actually gonna in, uh, improve your chances. Now you're still under a severe risk, and could you see a severe thunderstorm? It's possible. So we'll want to continue to watch that whole area, but because you do have all that convection to your east and south, uh, that should actually help you. Uh, so if you're in between those those two severe uh, areas like Farmington may get gapped, which is great. That's a pretty populated area there. I got f uh, friends and family in Farmington, so hopefully they get gapped. But we'll watch. It very well could have another severe storm uh, move through Chester. We'll see. I did want to get on my YouTube or on my um, my Twitter and see if anything's showing up for uh, Chester tonight. Um, yeah, let me check. Let me check on this. Give me just a second. All right, see what's coming up here. Um, yeah, they're talking about debris being lofted, yada, yada, yada. Let's see if we get any media coming out of Chester. Uh, anything that's been retweeted much at all. Okay, um, yeah, and I don't want to like just parrot random online, but they're saying devastation in Chester. Okay, this is coming from EMS. Buildings collapsed in St. Mary. Her live feed, heartbreaking, lots of damage throughout southwest Illinois sad night. That That's coming from EMS. Um, Chester lost a firehouse, according to this report. It says, and apparatus. I don't know what that means. What do you mean, lost apparatus? Yeah, there was a massive debris ball. Let's see if we can go back in time. We can take a look at that, and we'll also look at uh, uh, current radar as well. All right, so here it is. So I want to take you guys back, and I'm, I'll continue to go through the uh, YouTube feed or, uh, excuse me, my Twitter channel. So let's see. Let's go back, 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 back. And, yeah, right here it was doing business. This is after it already passed over Chester. I'm going to put uh, Velocity on the left and CC on the right and... Yeah, it was still producing a debris ball at this point. But, so as of, what was that, 30 minutes ago now? 20, 30 minutes ago, it's all kind of filled in. So it's much better. But there was a, there was a nasty, nasty debris ball associated with that, granted. Um, so the active tornado warnings, let's go back to St. Louis now. They did, they did extend the tornado warning, by the way, further uh, to the east, on the east side of St. Louis. This now includes northern Clinton. Bond County, southeastern Madison County, goes until 1030 Central. They're saying a radar indicated rotation. Uh, let me put this into motion. And so at 947 Central Time, a severe thunderstorm capable of producing both tornadoes and extreme, extensive straight line damaging winds were located along a line extending from near Troy to near Scott Air Force Base, moving east at 50 miles per hour. And I'm on here. I'm going to look for embedded rotation. Uh, let me recalibrate our, our velocity. All right. There we go. That should be good to go. And put it into motion. It's a nasty line. Boeing segment. And they're pretty notorious for producing brief spin-ups. 
Um, very difficult to, uh, to catch them in advance. So oftentimes they'll just warm the entire northern part of the bowing segment, which is what they're doing. Um, but again, not, not like the signature we saw in Chester, which was, uh, appeared to be a large tornado, a ton of debris in the air, and likely did quite a bit of damage. Let's go back and see. There was a tornado emergency for Chester, uh, but it was it is expired. Um, okay, Chris Jackson on the scanner tonight on Twitter. St. Mary and Chester. Okay. And let me see if I can't give them an update, let them know that we're on here. Okay, and all right, so and I'm going to go ahead and bail out of our other YouTube. There's no sense. I, I think I think uh, there's like two people on the on the secondary YouTube tonight, which is typical. I mean, that's 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 primarily for our patrons, which we typically cover uh, weather or more politically related stuff. So let me go ahead and bail out of that. And so now we're just running live on Facebook. And my, my weather-dedicated YouTube channel, which is meteorologist Jeremy Kappel, and I appreciate you guys being on here. Okay, so now that I've got that, um, I want to check back in again with uh, our friends out there in the Chester area, St. Mary's of Western Illinois. And that's where we're seeing, again, it sounds like quite a bit of damage is being reported there. If you guys are new to the channel, uh, please come back. Uh, yeah, hit the, you know, you know, the subscribe button, all that fun stuff. Uh, I appreciate that. Be sure to hit the notification bell because this, uh, the type of content that we deliver is time sensitive. You know, this is channel is dedicated exclusively for higher end severe weather events. Hence is why we're on here tonight, uh, with the tornadoes that are occurring in and around St. Louis, south of St. Louis and the portions of Southeastern Missouri, also Western and Southwestern portions of Illinois. So, yeah, please come back. We appreciate you guys being on. Uh, let me go ahead and get this over to our Twitter, though. Let them know that we are following the situation. Okay. Okay. All right. Getting that information out right now. And again, appreciate uh, those that are on Twitter that are helping us with the information as well. Okay, so Chris Jackson, thank you for getting that information out. The um, I want to thank our friends uh, that are uh, in the emergency management that are working late tonight to get this information out. Okay, thank you very much for that. Let's see what else we've got. Um, nursing home. Has a smell of gas, roof partially gone. So uh, getting all types of reports tonight of damage in and around the town of St. Mary's and also the town of Chester, southwestern Illinois. Um, yeah, okay, so police officers and other emergency services uh, departments are unavailable and seeking shelter due to a tornado emergency in, shel uh, in Chester. Okay. All right, um, that's out. Let's see who we have. It's 10.55. We'll do uh, get another update on the radar as we speak. And again, concerned with this uh, area of intense thunderstorm activity east of St. Louis, Boeing segment capable of producing a tornado. A lot of communities involved here. So the city of Lebanon, you're being hit now. Trenton, you're next. Uh, St. Jacob, Highland. Aviston moving towards St. Rose. This storm is moving at 50 miles per hour, so it's not wasting any time. Um, I don't, yeah, we do have a, some embedded rotation in this, but this appears at this point to be more straight line winds than anything else to me, at least right now. The tornado warnings from earlier that we had south, they seem to be diminishing a bit, but we do have the tornado reports. Train spotter. Just south of St. Mary reports a lot of tree damage on the road, time estimated by radar, 
at 9, 10 p.m. Central Time. So a report of a tornado, and also there was a report of one just a little while earlier that was very close to uh, Fredericktown, Cobalt Village, where they had reported uh, damage there, possible tornado damage. Several severe thunderstorm warnings that remain in effect for southeastern Missouri. It does, inc uh, does include West Palms, uh, Winona, Eminence, Centerville, and then to the east where we have the tornado warning south of Fredericktown. Um, let's see which radar I should use out of that. I think we'll stick with the St. Louis radar for the moment. Probably going to switch on over to either Evansville or Paducah next. And let's go over to our wider view as we continue to monitor. All right, and... You know, we talked about it, you know, I've been uh, watching this for a few days now, and if you follow me on, on my uh, WX Live media page on Facebook or my Twitter page, Jeremy Kappel, we talked about uh, how the ingredients were coming together and tornadoes would not just be possible, but would be likely this evening, and a few of them could be strong. Uh, but we also knew that there would be a fairly narrow window where you would have uh, enough instability for this thing to really maximize. You, you need the thunderstorms to develop, and that occurred late afternoon, early this evening. And then you've, this time of the year, instability is usually the, the weak, weakest factor because you've got all types of wind energy aloft. You've got an efficient lifter with that cold front. So you, the, the one thing that you need to make sure you have is the fuel. We've got the fuel now, but it should wane. It should diminish as we approach midnight tonight. That's midnight uh, Eastern. Uh, right now, it's 11 o'clock Eastern. It is almost 10 o'clock Central as we watch this. Again, mature cyclone. It's a 995 low, and it's producing just prodigious amounts of rainfall for Chicago. Moving into Detroit, northern Indiana, seeing a ton of rain. Those are some stronger thunderstorms, but they're not severe. They do have some flooding issues, though, south of Peoria. Let me turn off the radar for just a moment. Those are all flash flood warnings. So we got flash flood warnings right now. Uh, from Peoria to Bloomington, El Paso. Uh, so in addition to the strong to severe thunderstorms, we've got flood potential. Flood warnings as well south of Farmington. Uh, that is for Piedmont. And uh, make that Frederick, Fredericktown, also the, the active tornado warnings. There's a new one. I want to investigate that. That's out there in central Illinois. So we're going to go over to our other radar source and take a look at that here in just a couple of moments. Uh, in the meantime, let's see who we have on the program tonight. Thanks for being on. Good crowd, 274 people live. So, wow, thank you very much. Uh, it's, uh, I'm honored to have you guys on this channel. Uh, be sure to subscribe if you don't already and hit the notification bell. This channel dedicated to higher end severe weather events, which is why we're on here tonight. Um, all right. So, yeah, good crowd. Thanks for being on. I'm trying to scan some of these comments. You guys are coming in so fast. kind of hard to keep up, but that's okay. And uh, I don't think I have my moderators on tonight, which I, they, they didn't know I was going to do this either. So that's all right. You guys play nice, okay? Play nice and come back. And if you're interested in helping moderate this channel, let me know, okay? Because we will need some help. Um, all right. Car Guy says, could uh, possibly be high-end EF4, EF5. Uh, Car Guy, you can't be talking about that stuff yet. You really, you really got to wait until daylight to see what actually occurred. I haven't seen images that, that would support that. We have no idea the strength of the tornado. All we know is that it occurred, okay? We saw it on the radar. We had the, the TDS, the tornadic debris signature, so we know what happened, okay? That TDS is a, that's a truth be told. There's that, that is a, you know, when we upgraded our Doppler radars to the dual pole about a decade ago now, that gave us a tremendous insight to what these storms are doing. And one of the, one of the um, things that it could do that we weren't able to do before was look inside these storms and, 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 and determine through this thing called correlation coefficient, determine uh, if there was debris in the air, essentially. Because what it does is it compares uh, projectiles. It compares, like raindrops would all be fairly uniform. Even if you mixed in a little bit of hail, overall, the size is fairly u uniform. And so it looks at the size of these particles, and if they're all uniform, well, that's not a red flag. But if you have particles that are very large, like, you know, trees can be, 
lumber can be, right? Roofs, houses, trees. Then it says, uh-oh, we got problems. And that's what it can do now with that correlation coefficient and the, and the tornadic debris signature. So uh, it's so cool to be able to have this uh, technology at our fingertips now. It literally saves lives every year now. More and more, as more people become aware of good sources to follow the, the severe, the, these severe weather events. All right, we're going back to the St. Louis radar where they do have, uh, again, another tornado warning, a new one. And I want to look at the best data possible for this as well. So here's your level two. And so, okay, so the, the bow segment that was moving through East St. Louis seems to be losing its punch a little bit. It does not look as strong. But... They're flagging this thing up here. I'm going to have to go out to Lincoln, Illinois for this one. Going to have to get some better data, but they've got a tornado warning for uh, East Central Christian, Northwestern Shelby, and uh, South Central Macon County. That goes until 10 o'clock, 1030, excuse me, 1030 Central Time. you got about 28 minutes, okay? Uh, and so that's, that's pretty far north. I think a lot further north than originally expected for severe weather potential this evening. Not far away from Decatur. That's a fairly uh, populated area. So Macon to, I won't even pretend, like I know how to say the name of this town. M-O-W-E-A-Q-U-A. -A. Is it uh, Mauequa? <laughs> I don't know. I'm not laughing because there could be a tornado there. So uh, Also south. Uh, towards Centralia, tornado warning including Saint, uh, Salem, and that is South Central Illinois, tornado warning for Marion County, and also Northeastern Washington County, that goes until 10.45 p.m. Central Time. And, yeah, you know, it's hard to, I'm going to have to go to another radar, but we will. So here's a look at the Moeka, if you will. I know I messed that up. Mo Moequa, whatever the name of that town, south of Macon, south of Decatur. So pretty healthy, uh, it's not gate to gate, but pretty healthy broad shear on this. <clears throat> I'm going to test just to see if we've got anything uh, in the air, any debris lofted. I don't see any sign of that right now. So we're probably okay. Um, I'm putting this into motion. These storms generally moving pretty fast, though, 45, 50 miles per hour. There you go. And we'll see. And I'm going to look for more uh, reports. Again, Chester, Illinois, looks like it took a direct hit. <clears throat> Got the town of St. Mary's as well, which a lot of people are talking about that. That's next door to Chester. Looks like it also took a hit. Uh, St. Mary and Chester, Illinois, were both put under a tornado warning. And 40 minutes, respectively, before the large tornado block uh, track through both towns. It sounds like they did some pretty good, uh, some pretty good warning on this. And from what I've seen tonight, yeah, kudos to the National Weather Service and the Storm Prediction Center. They've done a very, very good job on this. A lot of people don't realize that that uh, yeah, this time of the year, late October, November, secondary severe weather season for central and eastern United States. A lot of people don't realize that. Um, and you don't get them every year. Some, sometimes, you know, you have pretty weak falls, like you have pretty weak springs. But this is lining up to be a pretty active pattern next few weeks, by the way. This is not going to be a one and done. We'll see more of this. Hopefully not to this degree, but uh, just, uh, you know, you'll want to stay on your toes. Active, active jet stream pattern above us right now. Um, contributing to some of what we are witnessing tonight. Uh, let's bring you back over here. I'm going to show 500 millibar winds here in a moment because, you know, so much of what we see on radar is reflected by what's occurring above us. I'm going to change my radar source, by the way, while I'm talking to you. Um, and so you really got to really kind of watch uh, the larger picture, the larger patterns. Here's a look at the jet streams. Take a look um, at this. And so you really got to really kind of watch. Sorry about the echo. All right, that should be fixed now. Um, but yeah, we've, you know, you get into the summer months and those active jet stream winds, they retreat typically well to the north across, um, you know, interior Canada. And it's really not until you get mid to late fall, they begin to descend back into the lower 48s. But that's what we're seeing now is we're seeing those jet stream winds and you're seeing this area here. Pretty, pretty steep trough of low pressure, a lot of wind up there. 
And so that's now interacting again with the Gulf moisture. But this is not the only one. There's another one that's on the West Coast. This will be coming on shore this week as well. With some pretty rough weather expected for parts of the central United States by Wednesday and into Thursday for the eastern United States. So we're going to have one now. We're going to have another one later. Uh, not to distract us from what's happening, though, let's take a look at... Uh, Let's take a look at the enhanced infrared uh, satellite imagery here. I'm going to close on in on this uh, pretty nasty looking cyclone. I mean, it's mature. Like I said, about a 995 millibar uh, cyclone. That's more than enough to cause some problems out there. And that's exactly what we're seeing. All right, about 400 people live on the program tonight. Thank you very much. If you don't mind a quick uh, thumbs up, if you're new to the page, we'd love for you to come back. So go ahead and hit the subscribe button tonight and uh, be sure to hit the notification bell because the content we deliver is time sensitive, okay? We are only here for higher level severe weather events. I'm not messing around with a severe thunderstorm warning or two or a little bit of low land flooding. No, we're on here when lives could be lost, okay? So that's what I pride myself on and you guys can help us get the word out that we are on. So thanks for being on. I appreciate that. I don't believe my moderators made it onto the feed tonight. Always looking to expand, by the way. Send me a message if you're interested in becoming a moderator on this page. Um, yeah, I'd love to get to know you guys. All right, uh, with that, let's go back over to radar, and we'll get the latest coming in from the National Weather Service. Um, we're going to bring their chat up as we speak and uh, see if we can get some real-time information what's happening there, again, with these severe storms. Uh, they've been raising a ruckus. There's no doubt about it. And unfortunately, we've got confirmation that uh, um, the town of Chester and the town of St. Mary's were hit, possibly hit hard. And let's go back over to our uh, primary radar source. Again, with that, uh, that big pinwheel spinning through the Midwest, associated cold front to the south, many warnings associated with that as well. Um, Okay, I, I'm going to take give you a give you a sample. I'm going to take you back over to Twitter real fast because I wanted to show you what that TDS looked like, and if you were watching live, you would have saw it. But basically, what the TDS is, the tornadic debris signature, it is saying that we've got projectiles that are large in size up in the sky, and you don't get that from rain or even hail that's falling. The radar can tell if it's rain or even if it's hail. But when you have lumber and, you know, pieces of you know, debris like trees lofted, roofs that have been picked up, the radar recognizes that. And that's what this blue area here is in the bottom right of this, this, this four-panel plot. That is a textbook TDS debris ball. It lines up perfectly with the velocity signature near the town of Chester. And uh, it looks like that would have been embedded. So that would have been a rain-wrapped nightmare. That's a rain-wrapped nightmare. You'd have no chance of seeing that coming. You'd have no chance. And so if it wasn't for the advent of modern radar, there's no way we could get this information out. So thank God we have this tool. And hopefully people heeded the warnings. It was a good warning. They had it out 30, 40 minutes before the town of Chester was hit. And uh, so hopefully that helped save some lives. Okay, so that's over on Twitter. That's from our friend Tony Liza on Twitter. And Tony, thank you for what you do. I'm going to continue to let the you know let people know that we do have live coverage that's on this channel, and it's happening right now. Um, all right, cold front producing all types of thunderstorm activity. Clearly, as you can see. Now, uh, the cold front itself is actually located. And let me get back to my Telestrator here. I'm really glad I charged my mouse before the show. That's always the worst when it dies during. So there's the cold front. It's really literally responsible for the second line of, of strong to severe thunderstorms. But we've got this line out in front. These have been discrete, and they have been rotating, and they have been responsible for a large number of warnings. And uh, you can see where all the activity is going. As we've talked about on my Twitter, as we talked about on this YouTube channel yesterday, there would be a window of opportunity where the ingredients would come together, okay? And that window has been occurring over the last couple of hours, but that window's not gonna go all night. I'm happy to say that. This is not an all night severe weather risk. You will see this, uh, this, the thunderstorms move from where they are now into 
portions of Western Kentucky, Western Tennessee, and Indiana. In North into Indiana, you're seeing a ton of thunderstorms and a tremendous amount of rain. I'd be very surprised if you don't have some pretty, pretty nasty flooding for parts of Chicago uh, because it's been raining like dogs and cats for, you know, three, four hours now. So I imagine some, some real-time flooding. But the actual severe threat should, over time, decrease to a degree as it moves to the east. One of the things that we look for um, is instability. CAPE, Convective Available Potential Energy, uh, we call it. Uh, and, and oftentimes that's a limiting factor, especially this time of the year when the sun's not up that, you know, it doesn't get that high in the sky. Typically, you just don't get as much heat that is produced. And uh, as a result, uh, the instability can be the limiting factor of these storms. Uh, right now, it's not. They're, they've got enough. But at some point over the next hour or two, we should watch that go down. So the threat should decrease some going forward a little bit later on tonight. Wow, look at that number. 777 people live in the program right now. Thank you very much. It's a biblical, that's a number of biblical proportions, by the way. Uh, and if you, um, again, uh, appreciate you guys being on. Keep, uh, keep subscribing and be sure to hit the notification bell uh, for future updates. As always, it helps. All right, let's go back over to level, level two radar. And then we'll take a look at future radar as well, where these storms are going tonight how long they could remain on the severe side. So we'll have that coming up. All right, so active tornado warnings. Again, not the most impressive signatures I've seen, uh, but they are warning them. And tornado warning, oh, just canceled. Tornado warning has now been canceled for Washington County in central Illinois. There's another storm behind it, though. Uh, that tornado warning has also been canceled. Good, very good. Um... And that's for southeastern Madison County goes until, so that one's done. That was a radar indicated. So that means that the only one that's left is this little guy up here, south of Decatur. And they're going to cancel that as well. That was uh, updated as of 10.08. Tornado warning for eastern and east central Christian County is canceled. That's fantastic. So this is good news all around. Let me make sure that I got that all right. Tornado warning for southeastern Madison County in Illinois is canceled. And the tornado warning in effect for Washington County is in fact canceled. Okay, so that's what we like to see. All right, we're going to continue to monitor. We do have additional severe thunderstorm warnings. I'm going to get a radar that's closer to them. I'm going to take this out of Paducah. And um, so... The warnings that are in effect, these are severe, severe thunderstorm warnings that remain in effect for southeastern Iron, southeastern Reynolds County. That goes until 1045 Central Time, about another 30 minutes or so. That storm looks like it's winding down, though. This one here, severe thunderstorm warning remains in effect until 1030 for northeastern Bollinger, southeastern, make that southern Perry, and northern Cape Girardeau counties. These are for storms capable of producing 60 mile per hour winds and also quarter sized hail. Severe thunderstorm warning remains in effect for 10, until 1030 Central Time for Jackson and Central Perry counties. Also for winds to 60 mile per hour and uh, some small hail with that as well. Uh, but overall, I, I think we're, we're, we're doing better. There's one last uh, warning, northern portions of Arkansas for northeastern Baxter and northwestern Fulton counties. That goes until 1015. That one should be canceled or expire within the next minute or two. Um, so that much is good. I'm gonna bring up that future radar for you guys. If you guys have questions for your location, let me know where your location is. We've got a pretty pretty packed house tonight, so you guys are gonna to have to kind of like, let me know where you're at if you're interested uh, in a particular location. Um, okay, so KP on here says, uh, KP Miranda, I tweeted at you as I couldn't DM you. I can mod for you. It's uh, okay. Yeah, I appreciate that. And let me know, Miranda, if uh, what type of uh, you know weather background you have. Uh, but duly noted, and I'm gonna I'm gonna write your name down. Okay. So I appreciate that. And uh, make sure I get that right. So it's K P O P M. Okay, I'll look for you, okay? And thank you for, for being on here. 
anybody else interested moderating this program may not uh, may not throw you on tonight but uh, maybe for the next severe weather event uh, let me know if you're interested preferably uh, you're a weather enthusiast maybe you have a little bit of weather background preferably all right John wants to know about Indianapolis tonight so let's do that I've got uh, I've got uh, Trenton on here from Bradford, Illinois, the boot heel of Missouri, uh, William on here. So we're going to be talking about that. We've got 780 people live. Good crowd. Thank you for being on. And uh, please help to get the word out that we're on here with this live severe weather coverage. Um, all right. So let's go ahead. I'm going to bring you to our future radar, where this stuff is, where it is going, who's going to be at risk going forward. And uh, we'll bring you guys directly on over here to, uh, we're going to start you with the 3K NAM. And that's not the NAM. This is the NAM. High res NAM. This is the previous run showing those storms as they race through southern portions of Illinois and southeastern Missouri. Uh, but they should begin to fall apart uh, by the time they reach the Wabash River, for instance, okay? Uh, and maybe the lower Ohio River. Uh, this will occur about... Uh, two o'clock in the morning or so and they should be in a significantly one to two a.m but i i think the severe threat's over by the time it reaches the wabash i really do i think you're fine i think you're going to have rumbles of thunder and you're going to have some heavier downpours um and maybe a couple of gusts but the the the, the organized severe threat is now so that's the uh, that was the previous run let me uh this is the current run see if it changed it all it holds it together a little better. The newest run makes it more bullish as it rolls into Indiana, southern Indiana. That would include Indianapolis. So it shows it reaching Indianapolis. And I don't know if it's completely picking up on everything radar's throwing. Because radar shows that heavy rain just north of Indianapolis right now. Uh that's actually with the warm front, but it's cold pulling. It's trying to drop south. It's going to wait, though. The warm air is going to win out. Indianapolis, you're going to be rain-free, storm-free for the next few hours. Probably two hours for Indianapolis. I would say around 1 to 2 a.m., it begins to close in on you. Unless you're northwest side of Indianapolis. You're up here where I went to school, by the way. Shout out. West Lafayette, Indiana. Boiler up, right? Any Purdue grads out there, let me know. Love me some Boilermakers. Um, but uh, you can see those storms racing. They're strong now. They're strong, uh, but they should diminish some in intensity over the next hour or two and should become largely sub-severe once we get beyond midnight, uh, Eastern and Central. So, all right, let's go back over. I want to look at one more, ra uh, one more future radar. This is the HRRR. It's the highest resolution radar, uh, excuse me, model, I should say, that we have available. And it's not too different from the, the new NAM. So these storms are going to hold together a little bit. Okay, so it is going to storm. It's going to storm in Paducah. It's going to storm in Evansville. It's going to storm in Indianapolis. That will reach Louisville by about 4 o'clock in the morning. 3 or 4 o'clock in the morning, you're going to have some, probably some, you know, some rumbles of thunder. Could have some wind gusts, maybe 40, 50 miles per hour. Uh, and then behind it, it is going to get windy with that with that low passing to the north uh, with the, the trajectory that it's on. You're going to get some wind behind it. But this is going to be, you know, what we call gradient wind. It's a response to the low pressure passing to the north with high pressure moving in out of the west. And there'll be a, a drying process. Tomorrow's not going to be a real pleasant day. It's going to be quite a bit cooler, quite a bit colder. In fact, let's see, um, and we'll take a look at uh, the temperature trends if we get an opportunity here. Just want to make sure that I'm not missing um, anything uh, with regards to the severe weather that's ongoing. But if I go out here to, say, western Missouri right now, you've got upper 40s and low 50s. So you, you were near 80 degrees today in the Ohio, lower Ohio Valley. Tomorrow, you're going to be about 20 degrees colder, Okay. So tomorrow, uh, so about a 20 degree drop in temperature with this, and it's going to come with wind as well. All right, look, 900. We are up to 900 people live. The crowd continues to amaze tonight. Thank you very much. Uh, maybe we can make a run at 1,000. What do you guys think? Yeah, maybe. 
Uh, we'll get back to uh, the latest radar. I did want to check back in. Yeah, the number's spiking, 950. You guys do it. Let's push into 1,000. That would be awesome. Um, let's go back over and see what they're saying. Uh, I've got my live Twitter feed here in front of me. Um, what we know are the, the towns of St. Mary's in Chester and Southwest Illinois appear to have taken the, uh, a pretty nasty blow from what appears to be a confirmed tornado, multiple tornadoes possibly. And uh, I'm getting the latest information coming in from the weather service now. Okay, and let's see what we've got. All right, now we're seeing pictures. Okay, now we are seeing pictures. Widespread tornado damage in St. Mary, Missouri, uh, saying no known injuries at this time. Uh, choose. Okay, I'm gonna show this. Yeah, and hopefully um, we don't we don't find out that there were. They had good warning. They did have good warning for any, uh, those that were paying attention. We talked about the storm a few days in advance, and uh, the tornado warning itself. Uh, that that was at least thirty, if not forty minutes. So very good warning. And uh, again, this is what it looked like. So I'm going to take you guys out to St. Mary's in uh, Missouri. That is, it's I I, meant, I said Illinois. It's uh, it's on the Missouri line, or close to it. All right, here you go. Take a look at this. This is this sucks. Yeah. It's always one thing, you know, when you see it on radar, it's another thing when you see the actual effects. Um, but you don't like to see that, obviously, quite a bit of destruction. This is by Charles Peak. Um, yeah, that's a claim. That car may be totaled. That's hard to tell. Um, obviously, roof lifted off of that, uh, what appears to be a garage or uh, shed. Trees down multiple vehicles Let's see if and i'll continue to scan to see if we get more images i'll let you know uh, 1100 people we did it good job uh normally we do some uh, we do some cowbell on the other program we do a little cowbell tonight for you guys i'm gonna try not to wake up the family though so thanks for being on here we appreciate you guys come back sometime be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell if you uh, not already subscribed to this channel uh this channel dedicated to the coverage of high-end severe weather events and uh, we're not, we don't like to mess around with low stuff. We don't hype weather. We just uh, shoot you straight, okay? Um, and uh, yeah, yeah, very much appreciate you guys being on. Looking for more images again. Uh, and here's, a, here's an image from uh, Reed Timmer, if you're familiar with Reed, avid storm chaser, made quite a career for himself. That's a look at that TDS or that tornadic debris signature shortly before it hit the town of Chester. That was a no doubt that is a large tornado on the ground. And so that was, what time is it? So that was right after we, that was right around 10 o'clock. So about an hour and a half ago now, this is what it looked like. But that's a no doubter. When you see an image like that, you know that lives are potentially being changed. And um, so, uh, yeah, we, we've been watching this for a few days. We knew that there would be a window, a, a window of time when this, when we could potentially see destructive weather, unfortunately, it came to fruition. Here's some more pictures. This is coming out of uh, damage near Purden, Missouri. Purden, Missouri. So this is different. This is not St. Mary's or Chester we've been hearing so much about. That appears to be a mobile home, I believe, that was turned over. There's the reason why you don't want to shelter in a mobile home. As I would always say during my TV career, if your home has wheels, you need to leave, okay? If your home has wheels, you need to leave. Uh, looks like pretty extensive damage here to this barn. Again, Purden, Missouri. Uh, all types of uh, farm equipment. Looks like an overturned uh, John Deere. And uh, yeah, you don't like to see that. Let people know that we're on here. And, all right, we'll continue to monitor this as uh, damage reports continue to come in this evening. Obviously, I got a lot of weather in front of me tonight. All right, let's see. Let's go back over to radar, make sure we're not missing out on anything. It looks like uh, primarily we're going over to severe thunderstorm warnings, which is great. It's fantastic. Um, so, we, we talked about there being probably a narrow window here this evening, a few hours. But we're beginning to uh, lose some instability, so that should help. 
and let's see on the let me see if I can pull up um, cape or convective available potential energy give me a second I'm gonna see if it'll come up it should be one of our meso analysis products surface cape let's see if I can get that to populate here and it'll give us an idea of what the atmosphere is doing okay so there we go turn on the data and surface cape there you go this is what I was hoping to see all right all right good this is good so surface cape is dwindling fast uh, and what do we mean by, by, by surface cape? And let's look at cape in the lowest 90 millibars, okay? Yeah, it's, it's dropping quick, and this means that these storms are going to run out of juice. Um, I'm going to take the radar off for a second. So the radar, you can see where they're located, but they should run out of juice because you're going to go from this area here where you've got uh, capes on the order of 1,000 to 1,500, units here in the orange and also up near st louis but look at where these storms are going they're going into this air that literally has almost no cape and it's likely because the sky was clear for a while this evening allowing some of that heat during the day to be released into the atmosphere and so this is going to help us uh, escape probably much further damage here um not saying we're done i didn't say we're done uh, but I do believe that we're moving in the right direction, and this should begin to devolve pretty quickly over the next hour. Uh, again, we're already looking at them pulling the, the tornado warning, so that's good. There is the one warning. I want to check back with that. All right, and let's hop on over here. And that warning should be dead. Uh, it should be dead. Let's see if they're still holding on to it. Uh, no, it is canceled. That's the one for Madison County. They extended a severe thunderstorm warning downwind of that. That goes for northeastern Clinton, northern Marion, and Fayette County. Okay, that goes until 11.15 p.m. Um, otherwise, looking good. Uh, storms, even the severe warnings are beginning to take off. We do have considerable amount of flash flooding that's occurring, though. We've got flash flood warnings that are in effect for Madison County, southeastern Missouri. We've got flash flood warnings in effect for Bollinger County. Let's do more of these. Uh, Perry County, flash flood warning. Flash flood warning as well. Southeastern Iron, northwestern Madison. I think we mentioned that one. So quite a bit of flash flooding out there. Otherwise, things are moving in the right direction. This is what I like to see. All right, and put this back into motion for everybody. And yeah, thanks for the thumbs up, guys. You guys did you, you did great. We have a crowd of almost a thousand right now. You guys have done great. Got a hello from Salem. Hello, and thank you for being on. Is Dent County, Missouri affected? Well, uh, I've went through an exhaustive list, but I'm not going to take the time to look up Dent County. If you're anywhere in the central or western portions of uh, Missouri, you're you're done. The only areas that we're still concerned with are, are the, the Boot Hill and uh, far southeast. The Boot Hill of Missouri and far southeast Missouri. Otherwise, you're fine. Moving in the right direction. Storms progressing eastward. Uh, should lose some of their punch. A tremendous amount of rain. Northern Indiana, northern Illinois, southern Wisconsin, into southern Michigan, Detroit to Chicago. Just getting crushed with rain. If you're following me out of upstate New York, you're going to see rain. It won't be as heavy, and you're not going to have any problems with severe weather. But that severe risk will shift to the east and south tomorrow. Again, this is a very potent storm, 995 low. Uh, I want to show you where the current uh, Storm Prediction Center risk area is. So that's what you're looking at. They continue with that enhanced risk. That does cover... You know, much of Illinois, southeastern Missouri, northern Arkansas. But, uh, and then they do, they carry that, that slight risk in the yellow from Champaign to Evansville to Memphis. So this is tonight. And again, everything's going to gradually weaken as we have already seen the weakening occurring. It will continue. And then tomorrow, uh, we're going to have maybe another round of severe where it's just a slight. I don't think the ingredients look quite as put together is what we saw tonight but we do have again 
that slight risk of severe weather um, that will uh, extend through portions of the Carolinas, Virginia's as well, Appalachia, the Piedmont. Uh, so look for, again, some stronger thunderstorms with heating. So they'll begin to fester probably late morning into the Appalachia. And then by afternoon, I think uh, maybe a little bit more of a significant threat, say Roanoke to Charlotte to Raleigh. Eventually into D.C. by tomorrow evening could have some stronger thunderstorms. Again, fall, typically uh, mid-late fall is secondary severe weather season. A lot of people don't realize that, but you can have uh, some pretty damaging storms this time of the year. I'm remembering of an episode that occurred back in um, 2006. And I was working out of uh, ABC out of uh, Louisville. That was WHAS 11 at the time. And I was working the overnight. I did both weekend mornings and weekend evenings. It was a fun shift. I oftentimes would just sleep at the station at night uh, in between my evening shift and the morning shift. And I remember uh, typically I would wake up at around 4 a.m., you know, for the 6 a.m. show, wake up at 4, brush your teeth, get your forecast together, graphics, and on the air by 6 a.m. I remember being rudely awakened by my producer at 2.30 in the morning, and I'm on the couch sleeping, and he says, uh, we got problems, and we had problems. It was terrible. It was November. I don't remember the exact date, November of 2006, but it was a terrible, terrible line of storms. Unfortunately, it produced an EF3 that roared right through Newburgh and portions of Evansville, Indiana. A trailer park took a direct hit. Uh, I think it was like 23 people died. It was awful. But they, again, that was a fall storm. You know, sometimes these fall squall lines can be very deceptive. I don't expect this one to maintain that intensity. And the reason is because we're losing the instability. So that much is good. That, that should be helpful. We we'll continue to monitor this just a little bit longer, though. And again, I want to thank you guys for being on the program. If you're new to the program, please come back. Uh, uh, we just hit the, you know, make sure you, you subscribe and hit the notification bell. What we do is time sensitive. Again, uh, this, this channel here is dedicated to uh, higher level severe weather events. So stuff that can potentially save lives. That's, that's what we're in it for. Got about 300 thumbs up and only three thumbs down. That's great. That's fantastic. Dalton on here. I was uh, the first truck into Joplin after an EF5. Oh gosh, Dalton. That's, that's so tough, my friend. So tough. I couldn't imagine witnessing that type of damage. I was nearby, by the way. I was in Topeka, Kansas at the time of the Joplin tornado. Awful, awful, awful event. We had tornadoes the day before, and it included one hit Topeka. I got to witness that one. Um, yep, we don't want to see a repeat. And um, All right, so yeah, thanks for uh, being on here tonight, guys. Be sure to find me on my other social medias as well. You can find me... Uh, all the, you know, the usual suspects, Facebook, Twitter, uh, Jeremy Kappel, Kappel with a K. Uh, I think my Facebook has a WX at the end. My main page has got about 95,000 followers. Very grateful for that. You can find me on Instagram. Uh, I think parlor sucks, by the way. Anybody like that platform? But I'm on there. I was told to be on there. And I am developing a bigger and bigger presence on Rumble. So far, it's been mainly news political stuff. But I think I will expand into Rumble with more weather content as well if you're interested. So find me on there. And, of course, this YouTube channel. Uh, all right. Let's, uh, let's take a look, make sure that we're not missing anything out there. And uh, I'm going to check in with the National Weather Service, see if they have any new information coming in from the damage that we've been seeing. Again, widespread damage out of uh, St. Mary's, possible Chester. Purden, Missouri was hit hard. Had a number of those uh, TDSs. Uh, tornadic debris signatures that we saw on radar and they have unfortunately verified with uh, tornadoes that actually hit tornadoes that were on the ground earlier yeah i never like to see that uh that wording tornado emergency brings back some terrible terrible memories but it's a product f with a purpose you know when you need to get people's attention in the worst way that's what they do they throw out the tornado emergency that's what we saw tonight um Right now, things are looking a lot better. We've got just a couple of uh, remaining severe thunderstorm warnings, one located near uh, is it Piedmont, Piedmont in uh, southeastern Missouri, uh, other one approaching Effingham uh, near uh, Vandalia in central, south central. That would be central Illinois. Okay. And still got a small crowd over there on our Facebook. Thanks, guys. You guys are troopers. We appreciate you all being on here. Well, it's 1135. I'm going to watch this just for a few more minutes. 
And if all continues to calm down, we'll call this for the night. Uh, but I do want to check back in with you guys. And uh, again, thanks for being on here. It was a great night. Uh, hopefully, we help to uh, prepare some people and uh, give people a heads up of what's happening. Um, okay, Mickey says, who shot Biggie? <laughs> no idea. Um, Dalton said that Torino and Joplin came out of the clear sky. Well, not exactly. Not exactly. There were multiple tornado warnings prior to the Joplin storm, but the Joplin was, was a is a case study because it was the merger of not one but two supercells merged together. And in the one that was producing a tornado, once it merged with the other supercell, it was it rapidly invigorated. And you went from a, a weak like EF zero, EF one, like rope, just small tornado to just massive wedge. That, of course, you know, uh, unfortunately, it killed a lot of people. Over 160 people died at one tornado. We never thought we'd see that again. We did not think we would see 100 people killed by a single tornado again. After, you know, the advent of Doppler radar and all of the technology, the, the, the mass warning system, everything that we had, we were like, there's no way we'll see another tornado murder 100 people plus people again but sure enough it happened mother nature always surprises us but uh anyway um with that being said it is 11 37 going to roll this for probably to about 11 45 then end on an even number if we don't have any reason to uh, stay on we won't and again thanks for being on tonight i'm going to see what the weather service is saying see if they got any new information coming in And let's see, it's come on over here to probably Paducah would be the best one. So there's a weather service office in like, uh, what, something like 100 locations across the United States. So you always want to check in with the office that's in charge of issuing the warnings. And right now, Paducah is the one that it's moving into. Okay, so we're in the Paducah chat. Let's go back and check in with St. Louis as well. <clears throat> All right, we're both, we're in St. Louis. We're also in Paducah. Uh, see what they're saying. Uh, St. Francis or Francois County reports uh, buildings damages, unknown number of injuries, power lines are down, trees are down, blocking roadways. So that's um, Francois. It's uh, F R A N C O I S. St. Francois, not St. Francis, St. Francois. Damage reported there. Uh, damage report coming out of Randolph County. Power lines down along, uh, along Route 150. Damage being reported to the Chester Fire Department. Firehouse was hit by the storm, it says. Okay, so that's out of St. Louis. Anything coming out of Paducah tonight? All right, and yeah, they're just issuing severe thunderstorm warnings. Everything else looks okay. All right, very good. All right, let's uh, take a look at the uh, bigger picture. And we mentioned there would be another storm this week. Let's take a look at that. So storm number one is going to visit the um, Carolinas and Virginias tomorrow. And you'll have a slight risk of severe weather that's associated with this uh, this upper wave. You're looking at jet stream winds here. And you can see that, that first wave, but there's a second one that's affecting the west coast. This is going to bring, again, the possibility of more active weather to the central and maybe southeastern U.S. this week. 
Let's take a look at the uh, old GFS here and see which runs we can get. We'll go to the latest one here. And here we go. We're going to move forward in time. So the storm that's out there now, it's going to lift again, going to bring some storms into the mid-Atlantic. But I tell you what, uh, that low is going to weaken quite a bit. So that may really help our friends in the Virginias and Carolinas tomorrow. We'll monitor. We'll monitor. And that's going to form a pretty nasty nor'easter, by the way. So that will be Monday night, Tuesday. Tuesday, cold rain for Boston, New York City. And quite a bit of wind. Okay, just a cold, drizzly rain for upstate New York, too. And then here comes that second one. This could bring severe Wednesday, Thursday. And that, that's going to be a little bit further south than the track of this one. So Southern Plains, Lower Mississippi River Valley, into Dixie, and eventually the southeast. So this would be Thursday, Friday. So Wednesday, Thursday, Wednesday, Thursday should be it. And then that's going to translate to a cold rain over the Ohio River Valley by next Friday. The times are changing, friends. Seasons are changing. And um, we just got, got to keep rolling with the punches around here. All right, so 1141. Do want to give a shout out to our patrons, all those over on our patron account. You can find me. That's uh, at patron, patron dot uh, W, or I should say patron uh, forward slash WX live. That's patron.com forward slash WX live. Come on over and uh, support us if you can. We'd love to have you. Let's uh, finish up with comments and we'll wrap this one up tonight. So uh, again, a little, little extra coverage tonight. We were in our, we were wrapping up our news and political show on Sunday nights. We have it over on my Facebook page and also another YouTube channel. And uh, there was no way we could not cover what was occurring. So I'm glad we did. And uh, just, you know, prayers for the people affected out there. Hopefully, um, hopefully nobody, nobody lost their lives to this, this nonsense tonight. And again, nonsense. We saw it. We knew it was coming. We knew it was coming. Um, you're welcome. Kelly, thanks for being on. Thank you for being on. Um, okay. Hired Gun says, I was driving past the St. Louis Lambert Field Airport, driven by there many times myself, as the tornado was hitting the terminal building that was not fun oh what year was that i remember that what year was that i don't remember um no no i don't think i don't know if i saw that the black street tornado black creek that's the that car guy asking if if we saw that i may have to look that up uh Okay, yeah, uh, we are just supposed to get uh, wind and rain south, uh, yeah, southwest Ohio. Yes, and again, this is the last time I'll show you guys this. The severe threat is winding down, okay? So basically, if you're not under a warning now, and if you're not immediately to the east of where these storms are, you're probably going to be fine. By the time the storms reach the Mississippi River and the Ohio River and the Wabash River, I think largely sub-severe. You can't rule out a warning or two, but the ingredients that we had earlier this evening that brought together the tornadic conditions, they're just dying off. We're losing instability, we're, we're losing fuel. So really, I think this is gonna translate very well for uh, anybody that's like out here. So anybody in that direction should be just fine. Gonna rain and storm, Evansville, Paducah, Memphis, Louisville, Nashville. Cincinnati late tonight, but again, don't think it's going to be a big deal. All right, so with that being said, oh no, my telestrator's still on. I'm going to turn that rascal off. I don't know. Let's try the escape button. Nope. How about that? Did that do it? Escape. No, it's still on. I'm in telestrate only mode. Oh, there we go. I fixed it. That's, that's fantastic. All right, I promised you guys 11.45, we're going to get out of here. Uh, so we'll watch uh, the situation tomorrow. I don't think it's going to be a huge deal, but we'll watch for the Virginias and Carolinas. In the meantime, thanks for being on. Be sure to hit the subscribe button, the notification bell, and come back and follow us again next time. You guys stay safe out there, stay blessed, and we'll talk to you soon. Bye.